I think, been a stand-up uh, secretary. Uh, you haven't cast blame uh, to those who came before you. Um, I'm interested in uh, uh, the capacity uh, of the agency, and I use the word capacity. We've talked about 16, uh, uh, sorry, 66 new people. That sounds good to all of us, particularly in this climate. It sounds responsive. More troubling to me was uh, news that uh, Toyota's engineers and uh, technology experts were simply not there, that, that uh, NISI didn't even have people capable of doing the technical work that would have been necessary to look closely at what Toyota was doing. So when you look at these 66 people going forward, are we going to have uh, experts in the agency that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Toyota and anybody else? How are you dividing up these new people so we know we have people with the technical capacity to do the job, as apparently was not the case because you have engineers from Toyota saying to the press, I didn't know how to do the work that was necessary in electronics. We will find the climate that we're in today with the economy, I, I have no doubt we're going to find the very best experts that we can to fill these positions and we will resource them in areas where we need them as quickly as the Congress passes our budget. And, you, and in, in, in division of labor, uh, as experts versus other kinds of people, the, there were missing experts, were there not, uh, at, at NITSE during the yes. last few years? Yes. So in filling the gaps, are you focusing on these technological experts, these engineers, these uh, people, yes, yes, you may be out yes. of... Yes, we will fill the positions with people where we know we really... Our, where the direction our, our investigations are going and what we see is the, the way forward for um, looking at uh, complaints. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I've, I have to ask you about the notorious culture of secrecy that um, even uh, is admitted in Japan uh, and whether or not issues of competence and candor came together um, encapsulated in a culture which apparently was not as open as uh, some would have it. Have you had difficulty penetrating the Toyota culture, uh, which teaches that these are things that should not be aired in public? Yes. How are you penetrating that? Uh, well, we've had, we've had some issues, and that's the reason when uh, the acting administrator Ron Medford came to me and said, I need to go to Japan to talk to these people directly. I said, get on a plane tonight. And he went, and he talked directly with the people in Japan. And uh, I, I picked up the phone, and I talked personally to Mr. Toyota. And I told him, these are serious matters. They need to be taken seriously. And as I said earlier, I'm pleased that he accepted the invitation of this committee to appear here. I think that begins to build the kind of communication and opportunity for people to really talk to one another about how we solve these problems in the future. Well, let's take the sticky pedal issue. Um, we now know that Toyota, because Toyota has said that it knew of this issue as early as uh, 2008, um, but it didn't decide to make those changes uh, in the U.S. until over a year later. Is it accurate that they did, that knew about it and over a year delayed in making the necessary changes? And how, how did they justify that uh, to your agency? Madam Chair, I'd, I'd rather just uh, give you the details for that, for the record, if I could, rather than getting into the specifics. Uh, you'd like to say that again, Mr. Chair? I'd yeah. like to put that on the record so I can be very specific about the chronology of it and how it took place. Uh, Mr. Secretary, that really is going to be necessary. It is that lag which makes everybody driving a Toyota today wonder whether or not in a few months from now they'll hear about another recall that they should have heard about. 
uh, prior to that. It's very important to get that on the record as soon as, as you can. I understand uh, the, necess the necessity to do so we'll with do considerable accuracy. Um, in meeting with the committee uh, staff, uh, officials from your agency said that Toyota had been dragging its feet. Now, th that's, that's in quotes. Uh, that's from the staff. Uh, when it comes to working with your agency to solve the issues, do you believe that Toyota has been slow to respond to safety concerns raised by the department and by NHTSA? Yes, I do. That's the reason we went to Japan. That's the reason I talked to Mr. Toyota directly. That's the reason we've had these discussions. Uh, do you believe now that the, the candor and the rapid response that you are demanding you are receiving? Uh, in other words, it, that this, this notion that, that if you take your time, that was apparently a part of, of the culture of Toyota, these things will work out, that when it comes to these cars, that that will not be tolerated, that somehow the other, what, what they say to you, you now can trust? I said yesterday at the other hearing, uh, Madam Chair, that I think the business model for Toyota where they have some very, very good people in North America, very good people, uh, their issues may not have always been communicated or heard uh, in Japan. But I, I do think that the fact that Mr. Toyota is here, that he's testifying, that he's willing to answer questions, uh, things have changed. His visit here has been a game changer. Very important for Toyota owners to hear that the game is really different now. Mr. Secretary, however, I'm looking at a big ream of paper, uh, and I must uh, congratulate your new administrator because it was sent apparently only on February 16th. He's not been in office very long, as you indicated. But they contain over 100 questions, as of now, seeking information uh, about this crisis, it, it would lead us to believe that even now you are somewhat skeptical about what you're hearing from Toyota because you had to send a whole ream of entirely new questions uh, to Toyota uh, about uh, uh, what appears to be this uh, whole set of, of issues, even though you have penetrated very deeply already and gotten countless recalls and countless um, information uh, anew from Toyota. Um, what is the meaning of having to send so big a pile? These are three separate letters from different uh, parts of NHTSA. What, what, how are we to interpret at this date the necessity to get this much new information from Toyota, or is it new information? Some of it will be new information. I made a judgment and a decision that we would do the most comprehensive review going back as far as we possibly could to get information so we can make a judgment about whether they were forthright, whether we had the information, whether we were making judgment calls based on everything we had. We need to see all of that so that we can determine if Toyota was forthright because we have the ability to issue penalties if they weren't. But before we decide that, we want to make sure that they give it all to us. And did we get it all to begin with? Now, how common is it to have to send so many, such a big pile of letters so late in a controversy to get uh, the information that's necessary? I mean, you've had recalls, you've had, this is, what's new about this is, is recurrent, recurring, almost rolling recalls. We felt it was necessary to d really do the total comprehensive review of this to so make sure we get it right. Let, uh, let me ask you about what you believe happened to a company who stole the thunder from other companies, uh, and most especially companies in the United States, based, it would seem, initially almost primarily on the safety and quality of its product built 